Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, and welcome to the next video in your Calculus 2 video set. Today we're going to be talking about section 8.1 on arc length. Specifically, we're going to talk about how you actually find the length along a curve y equals f of x. Now we're going to break this bigger goal into four main learning goals. Two of them we're going to talk about in this video, and the other two we'll talk about in the next video. So in this video specifically, we're going to talk about how we derive the formula for arc length, how you can see where it comes from and have a deeper understanding of it. And we'll also go through some basic applications of applying the formula. In the next video, you'll look at extending these ideas to curves that look like x equals g of y, so a little bit different. And we'll also look at some more complex examples. So let's get started. We'll start by taking a look at the big idea of calculus. We'll look at a general application of integration. In general, we want to view this as we want to approximate something over a small interval, then add up our approximations, take a limit to make our approximations exact, and express as an integral. So, one application you've seen before already is finding the area under the curve. So, for instance, if I want to find the area under the curve from 1 to 5, in general, that could be a hard thing because the top of our region here is curved. So, calculus tells us to just look at some small interval. If I call that location x sub i, then I say as long as I look at a small interval around that x sub i, if I look at the height just in that interval, it's approximately constant. So we approximate the height over this small interval. We approximate that to be f of x sub i. Now if that's the height, and I take delta x, some change in the x value to be the width of this uh, interval, then the area is approximately this value in my slice. So I approximated the area now in that small interval. What does my next step say in general? Add up our approximations. So the total area under the curve should approximate me the sum of all those uh, smaller approximations. Then we take a limit to make our approximation exact. So now I look at the limit as delta x goes to zero of that sum, and that should give me the exact area under the curve. And lastly, we express the integral, because we recognize this piece to be the definition of the definite integral. Therefore, now we can say that the area is the integral from 1 to 5 of f of x dx. So what I want you to focus on is these bigger themes, approximating an interval, adding up the approximations, taking the limit, expressing as an integral. Now let's apply those general steps to arc length. So now I want to find the length of the curve from x equals 1 to x equals 5. So what that means is the distance along the curve that I'm now shading in yellow. So from x equals 1 over to x equals 5, somewhere right about there, I want to find the length of that highlighted distance. So in general, this is hard because our curve is a curve. It is not a straight line. But if I look at just a small section of the curve, and I'm going to do kind of the, the drawing thing where I blow up that small region into a bigger picture, just that little small section looks like a line if we were to zoom in on it. And so if it's a line, I can think of making a small little right triangle from that little line segment where this section would be delta x, a small change in the x value. And this distance would be a small change in the y value. And just so we can really visualize what I'm talking about here, let me draw that same triangle on the actual line segment. So I say delta x, I can drop those all the way down to this x-axis and think of maybe this value as like 1.2 maybe, and this value is x equals 1. 3 maybe, and that delta x is really this distance here. It's really the difference of those two values. So in this case, delta x would be approximately 0.1. But in general, that delta x would be a small, small, small value here. And similarly, that delta y, I can see, is just some small change in the y value in that little segment. But once again, now that I've created this right triangle with where I know the legs of the triangle, I can now write an expression for the hypotenuse, which is really the length of the curve, my approximation of the length of the curve in that small interval. So now I can say that that delta s should approximately be equal to the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. Okay, so that's my approximating the length of the curve in a small interval. 
And now I'm going to do a little bit of algebra on that expression. What I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a delta x squared. I'll get delta y squared over delta x squared, factoring out my delta x squared. And then I will simplify this a little bit. I'll write this as 1 plus, and I'll have a numerator and denominator squared, so I'll just write that as delta y over delta x quantity squared. And then I have the product of two things underneath this radical, so I can take the square root of each, but the square root of delta x squared is just delta x. So now I have this expression for my approximation. So now what do I need to do? Well, generally I need to add up all my approximations. So the total length here should approximately be the sum of all these other pieces. The sum of the square root of 1 plus delta y delta x squared delta x. And that should be a good approximation for the length of the curve here. But I want an exact value. So what I need to do is take the limit. This should be the limit as delta x goes to 0 of the sum of all this stuff. But now when I go to evaluate this limit, if this limit exists, then two things are going to happen. One, the limit of this sum is going to turn into the integral of the square root of all this stuff, dx. But also underneath this radical, if I look at the delta y over delta x piece, as x goes to 0, this is going to turn into the derivative of y with respect to x. And so now I have this expression to calculate the exact length of the curve from 1 to 5, or more generally, from some x value a to some x value b. And so this is going to be our formula for arc length. The integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared. Now let's see if we can apply that formula to actually find the length. Okay, this problem is find the length of the curve y equals 2x minus 5 on the interval, interval from negative 1 to 3. So we have our formula, and now we just have to apply our formula. Since we have y is equal to 2x minus 5, I need to calculate dy dx. In that case, this is just 2. That means that dy dx squared, the thing I'm going to put into my formula, is going to be 4. Thus, the length here, I'm using L in this case for the arc length, is the integral from negative 1 to 3, taking those from my interval notation up here. The square root of 1 plus 4 dx. And then I just simplify this. It looks like the length is equal to the integral of negative 1 to 3 of the square root of 5 dx. So this is the square root of 5 times x evaluated from negative 1 to 3. And this is going to be 4 times the root 5. That should be the length of the curve over this interval. Now, how can we verify that? In this case, we have a very nice curve. And so if we look at a plot of it, it's just going to be a straight line. And so really, for this straight line, we could actually draw, once again, a very large right triangle here. And we can see that this length, going from negative 1 to 3, is going to be a distance of 4 and disproportionately drawn here. But this length over here is going to go from, it looks like, negative 7 to positive 1. So that has a height of 8. And so the arc length in this case should be the square root of 8 squared plus 4 squared, or the square root of 64 plus 16, the square root of 80. And 80, we can actually break down as the square root of 16 times 5. And so this looks like it's 4 times root 5, the exact value we had before. And once again, we can only do that secondary approach to verify our solution, in this case, because we had a straight line. Let's look at a more complicated example. This one says find the length of the curve y equals sine of x on the interval from 0 to pi over 2. So once again, we're just going to apply our formula. We know in this case, we know in this case that y equals sine of x. So therefore, y prime should equal cosine of x. So the length of this curve should be the integral from 0 to pi over 2, the square root of 1 plus cosine squared of x dx. Now, of course, the question is how do we evaluate this integral? And most of the time, these integrals are going to come out to be very challenging. So it's OK for us to use another tool, another resource, 
to help us evaluate it. So here I have Mathematica open, and I'm just going to type in this problem. So I'm going to look at the square root of 1 plus cosine of x, and then we want to square that cosine. And now we could integrate this if we wanted. We could integrate this integrand from x equals 0 to pi over 2. And if we run that, we can get some sort of value, but it's going to be kind of a, a confusing looking value. And in general, these integrals can be so challenging that oftentimes it will take a long time, even for Mathematica, to evaluate these integrals. That's why I would strongly recommend you to use n integrate instead of integrate. Now I get this numerical value, 1.91. I can once again refer to my graph and say, yeah, that looks like it should be around 2. I feel confident in my value. In conclusion, you've now seen where this formula comes from and a basic example of how to apply the formula. Now in the next video, we'll talk about how to apply it for different curves, curves of the form x equals g of y, and how to know which formula to use, as well as do a more complicated example of finding the arc length. Alright, that concludes this video. Thanks for your time.